So I was not going to film this video today, but I don't think I'm going to have time throughout the week because I'm off to Greece. I'm off to Santorini next week. So I thought, let me just get this out the way. And basically it's the second part of the video where I'm going to talk to you about what kind of questions that you get in a hospital pharmacist interview. So the first video was based on like just general interview preparation. This video is going to be on the types of questions that you get for probably like a band six rotational pharmacist job in the UK. It will be a bit jumpy because if someone walks in, I have to stop recording and stuff. And I've literally just come up with it all now. So it might be, like I say, not as well structured as my other videos, but let's just go ahead anyway. So the first thing you will get in a hospital pharmacist interview is the BNF and a hospital drug chart. If you've not seen a drug chart, like I went to an interview and I was like, I've never even seen a hospital drug chart, I worked in community, then that's an issue. You need to get one from one of your friends or anyone who works in a hospital, just a blank one and get familiar with it. They are all slightly different, but they're basically, they'll have the same information. So what you're looking out for is obviously whether there's the patient name, look at the age, whether they're elderly or young, um, look at their allergies. So they always tend to put like a penicillin allergy and then they obviously prescribe like amoxicillin on the chart, but that's that's just standard. Also check for whether the doctor has filled out the VTE risk assessment bit. And I've had some people uh, asked in interviews, what are the typical risk factors for a VTE, which I did not know, but thankfully my friend um, told me that she was asked this interview in an interview, so then I was able to prepare. Uh, so see if that's like actually filled out by the doctor. Another thing at the front of the chart is whether the patient is on insulin or warfarin. If they're on warfarin, what's their target INR? Um, what's the indication and duration for that? If they're prescribed antibiotics, is it appropriate? Like, is it something that's prescribed per weight? So is it appropriate? Is the dose appropriate for the patient's weight? Um, is the duration and the indication for the antibiotics written on the chart? What are the interactions between the drugs on the chart? So certain ones will be really clinically significant, which you shouldn't miss. And some will just be stuff that you should monitor, like monitor the patient for serotonin syndrome, for example. Another thing is frequency of the drugs and the timing. So if it's a statin, should it be at night time instead? And signatures. So is it signed by the doctor? And not even signed by the doctor, but I've had cases where the chart's been signed by the doctor but not signed by the nurses after administration and I did not pick up on that. Um, they told me on the phone call after I didn't get the job. So that's another thing. Oh, so there's um, the fact that they always put something like cocodamol on the PRN side, the when required side, and then they prescribe regular paracetamol. So just watch out for what's prescribed regularly and what's prescribed um, PRN. And remember, in hospital, you generally can't put for the root of administration. You can't just write oral slash IM or, you know, subcutaneous slash um, IM or IV or whatever. You have to prescribe those separately. So that's just good prescribing practice. And that's something that you should be looking out for. I'm sure there's a lot more things that you should be looking out for on a hospital chart. But in my head right now, that's all I can think of. If you can think of more, then obviously just write them down below. The second thing that you will always be asked for is asked about is prioritization. So there's going to be someone who's needing like an epilepsy medication, someone who's at the hatch and needs their medication, someone who's also complaining about a mistake that someone else has made, and um, a doctor on the phone trying to call you and ask for advice, and a patient on the ward who wants counselling, and the fridge out of range or something like that. They're going to confuse you and put all of this stuff and say you should prioritise what you're going to do. I am probably probably the worst at these questions but I've realized that if you make it into a discussion and you keep on asking questions then generally it tends to be okay I've had some interviews where they say no like you need to put them all in an actual order and tell me what the order is going to be but in other places I've just been like hmm so how long has the fridge been out of range or you know um, what exactly can I just what can I delegate delegation is a huge thing in in this question so think about what you can tell well, what you can ask other people to do. So sometimes technicians are able to um, check and sometimes they're also able to do med medicines reconciliations and counselling and things. So depending on what they're qualified to do, you can ask people to, you know, help you. 
and also in terms of phone calls um, from doctors asking for advice, is it is it urgent? You can tell them, I'm just going to do this and then call you back. So yeah, think about those kind of things and make it into a discussion. That is that is what I would say. Uh, the third thing that, we'll, that they'll definitely ask you about is your pre-registration audit. So how did it go? What was it on? And were you able to action what you recommended? Another one is what's the latest clinical intervention that you made? And with these questions, you can't just think about it. So I used to turn up to interviews having just thought about what I would say on the way. And then when you actually turn up the interview, you can't speak properly and then you can't even remember what examples you thought about. So actually think of really specific examples and write them down and practice saying it out loud so that when they ask you, you're not there like an idiot and you can just say, here's an example of a very good um, intervention that I made. I did. I used to say stupid stuff like, well, somebody was prescribed two laxatives, so then I told the doctor to take off one, and it just, yeah, it just wasn't good. Think about ones that are actually going to matter, and that seem like something that you really noticed that was important. You will have to counsel a patient, and one of the panel members will pretend to be a patient, and you'll either have to counsel them on a drug, and they'll be quite, you know, happy to talk to you, or you'll get a difficult one where they don't want what you're counselling them on. So they'll say, I'm not going to take this, I'm not going to take this. And you just have to try and talk to them. Basically, just switch your mindset. Don't think about the fact that you're in an interview. Blah. Don't think about the fact that you're in an interview. Just counsel that person as if you are talking to a patient. My recent one was counselling a patient on a Pixaban and she blank, like straight out was like, I'm not taking this, I'm not taking this. And I got information out of her and was like, oh, so what would you take? And she said, well, my husband takes warfarin, so I would take that. Yeah, try and find out alternatives and find out as much information as possible from the patient and think about what you can say to try and either convince them to take it and the importance of taking it or an alternative. Another one is a, you might have a situation where you either have to tell them what you would do if a consultant would prescribe something that you don't agree with or they will pretend to be the consultant themselves and you are sat in a across the table essentially arguing with a consultant who you know says I want to prescribe this and you know you don't agree the bottom line of this is that you if you're not happy with it you shouldn't be signing it off and that is kind of where you have to be you can't just say well okay fine because you're a consultant then you know you must be right you you have to talk about it discuss it think about how you would handle conflict and then discuss with them you know, how, how you go about telling them why you think it wouldn't be a good idea and why in the end eventually you would, you would not sign that off. So don't, just, just basically don't make the mistake of saying, yes, I will sign this off because now you've convinced me. Just because someone's a specialist or a, a, like a high, high position in the NHS does not mean that you cannot confront them about their decisions. Another question is, how would you reduce pressure on the A&E? how Brexit is going to affect pharmacy. Oh, this is a typical favourite. When have you gone above and beyond for a patient? Start is explain the situation, talk about the task, what the action was and your result. And so when it comes to the question, when have you gone above and beyond for a patient? Use this and have an actual flow of how you went above and beyond for a patient. Like I say, think about this beforehand, actually write it down and practice saying it out loud because what you say in your head isn't always what comes out of your mouth. When's the time when something has happened the way you didn't want it to and what have you done about it? Another question is how will you prepare for your diploma and do you even know anything about your diploma? So each hospital has like funds a different diploma. So I know a hospital, the one that I'm working for now currently funds uh, the Belfast one and other hospitals do the UCL one. So what do you know about it? If you don't know what the diploma entails then how are you supposed to start it when you start the job? What are you going to do about two colleagues arguing? This I've had and I really butchered this answer. Um, I think I kept on saying stuff like I'd keep on trying to talk to, to them both and trying to resolve it. But actually the right answer was if it doesn't work, then to escalate that to someone who's higher than you. If there are outpatient scripts that you're doing in the, in the hospital pharmacy, then another thing you have to think about is whether it's going to be cheaper for the patient to buy it over the counter. They also like you to advise on that. How will you prepare for your on-call role? 
and how will you prepare for balancing work life and non-work life oh yeah and how will you prepare for each rotation so all of this you know just talk about how you'd ask people who have done the rotation you'd ask people who have done the diploma um, you'd talk to people you'd research it and all that how have you dealt with criticism and how have you improved from it ah and another critical one is what's your latest cpd entry and again don't just say one line like know in detail what you've written in your latest CPD and talk about it. There's quite a few questions that I have on my phone that um, I don't really feel like are worth talking about in a video so I'll just put them down below in the description box and you can work through them. They're just typical questions like what challenges do you encounter on a day-to-day -day basis and those are you know going to be different for each person. If you can think of any critical ones that I've missed then please write them below and also just write any that you can remember because it's all about helping I guess each other in this difficult process. Um, with interviews I've realized that honestly it really is all about practice. Don't go in putting too much pressure on yourself. Just think you know what if I get it I get it. If I don't I don't and just show you as a person. I've always not been as great at answering clinical questions but then I think a lot of the panel have just seen that uh, you know I'm like kind of nice and they just think this person would work hard and so those are how I've scored most of my interviews. Also you are going to be better at interviews if you work as pharmacists because like screening drug charts happens every day as you do it every day you'll practice whereas when you first start you haven't done it before so you're not going to be as good or as quick so each interview is different each trust is different some will give you oskies some will give you an, ad an additional calculations exam and it just depends where you're going to go but just remember you, you can just keep applying if you don't get it you don't get it and there's always plenty of other hospitals so i would say just keep at it and that's about it from me so uh yeah i shall see you in the next video